So today is the first Saturday, of course, of October, and of the 26th week of Ordinary Time, and it's, she's not on the, uh, the tur our liturgical books, but she, uh, we celebrate the Feast of St. Theodore, Theodore Guerin. It's a French name. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So St. Theodore uh, lived between 1798 and 1856, and she was born in Estable, France, towards the end of the French Revolution. She was a pious child who loved prayer and, was no, and who knew her vocation was to be a nun. However, she was delayed in following this path after the murder of her father when she was only 15, which in addition to the previous death of two of her siblings, sent her mother into a deep depression. So sanctity does not always uh, grow in, in the flower, in the uh, roses, you know. So these people, just like everybody else, had sometimes severe, brutal hardships they had to grow, had to grow up in. St. Theodore took on the household tasks and the care of her mother and her remaining sister. Finally, when she was 25, her mother gave her consent and Theodore left home to enter the religious life. She joined the Sisters of Providence who served God by educating children and caring for the poor, the sick, and the dying. In 1840, she was asked to lead a band of missionary sisters and establish her order in the United States of America, specifically to serve the pioneers in Indiana. Even though her health was fragile, she crossed the Atlantic and then traveled by steamboat and stagecoach until she reached the wilderness mission of St. Mary of the Woods which consisted only of a tiny log chapel. She and her five sisters endured the extreme hardships common to life on the frontier. Less than a year after arriving, she opened the academy, an academy which became the first Catholic women's liberal arts college in the United States, still active today, called St. Mary's of the Woods College. St. Theodore also established numerous schools, pharmacies, and orphanages throughout the state of Indiana. She was beatified by now St. Pope John Paul II and canonized in 2006 by Pope Benedict XVI.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Just before beginning, uh, the reason it's white today and not our blessed, it's uh, obviously white and not kind of white blue for our Blessed Mother, is because today is the anniversary of the dedication of the cathedral, which is the Mother Church of the Diocese. And in every diocese throughout the world, this is a solemnity at the cathedral, uh, aside from the fact that it's their you know, feast day, October the 7th, but this is the feast of the dedication. And throughout the diocese, it's a feast, feast day. That's why we'll pray the Gloria. So this is, uh, goes back right to the Old Testament when the sacred temple uh, was dedicated to God. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who from living and chosen stones <clears throat> prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the grace you have bestowed so that by unceasing growth, your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. The word of the Lord. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. 
The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteousness altogether. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Alleluia, alleluia. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool, says the Lord. What is the house that you will build for me? Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. There was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He is gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything... I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said of him, Today salvation has come to this house, because Zacchaeus too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. When I was praying this morning, trying to imagine what it would be like to be Zacchaeus in today's gospel, I was reminded of a time when I was at World Youth Day in Brazil, and we were on Copacabana Beach, and Pope Francis was in the helicopter, and he flew onto the beach, and then he took the Pope Mobile down the street. Um, for a long time, like, because there were over a million people on that beach, and everyone was crowding around. People were literally climbing trees and other things just to see him. And imagine if you were there trying to just see Pope Francis, hoping that maybe he'll look at you. Imagine if he stopped the Pope Mobile. He's like, you. Today, I'm going to go live at your house. We're having dinner tonight. That would be like a life-changing event for you. You would always remember that event, and it would probably have a huge impact on your life. Today, at Mass, something greater than that event happens for all of us who can receive Holy Communion. It's true. The God who Pope Francis worships gives himself to us in Holy Communion. 
do we actually like believe this that that the god who pope francis worships is saying to each one of us by name today i must stay at your house today i'm going to come and live in you yesterday when we transferred the blessed sacrament from the altar to the adoration chapel it was beautiful to see the reverence that everyone showed to our lord in the blessed sacrament as we made that transfer but i was thinking why don't we show that same reverence to each one of us when we're leaving mass because we also just received jesus he's actually in one each one of us as well we should show that same reverence to each other person because we also have our Lord actually living in us after Holy Communion. So we should be showing similar reverence to other people. And we should realize in ourselves as well that we are, as we heard in the first reading, temples of God. St. Paul says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? Do we actually know this, that God's actually living in us? Imagine if you're at home later today, and you get a knock on the door, and it's actually Jesus. He says, guess what? Guess what, Bob? I'm moving in. You got a new roommate. Like, that's what happens. That's what happens in our lives. That's what happens today at Mass in a special way. If I gave you, instead of Holy Communion where you receive it, a pix, like someone will receive today, and I told you to hold on to that for the rest of the day, the Blessed Sacrament, until next Mass, that would probably change your entire day if you just had to hold on to the Blessed Sacrament. We should have that awareness as we leave. I've been reading a lot of St. Faustina, and she, after her first Holy Communion, she walked home, and one of the neighbors saw her, and she's this little girl. She said, Faustina, what are you doing all alone, walking home? She said, I'm not alone. You know, she knew when she left this church after receiving Holy Communion, I'm not alone. Jesus is with me. Let's have this awareness today of the Lord's presence in our lives. That he's truly with us. He's coming to live in our homes. He's with us at all times. This is an inexhaustible source of joy for each one of us, if we truly get it. 24-7, at any point in the day, wherever you are, wherever you may be, God is with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here, and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the grace of the sacraments and an answer to their prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect, it, perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of, of a life acceptable to you. <clears throat> year by year you sanctify the Church, the Bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that, rejoicing as the mother of countless children, <clears throat> she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Be built up like living stones into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood.
Let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking in this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Two announcements tomorrow from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, at Oak and 29th will be Life Chain. Every year in the seminary we would do this Life Chain where we would stand and um, have posters for pro-life and really encourage anyone who can make it there from 2 to 3 tomorrow on Oak and 29th. It is a wonderful way to witness to the, your faith and to the pro-life message. And if you can't make it, we all need to try our absolute best to pray for life chain because that is the one day that us seminarians were guaranteed to get persecuted for our faith. Absolute guarantee. At least a dozen people you would get persecuted for your faith. So please pray for life chain tomorrow. And if you can make it from 2 to 3 p.m., Oak and 29th. It's in the BC Catholic as well. You can check it out there. 
The second is next Saturday will be our first faith formation event. So this is a direct result of the Upper Room Conference. Eric Chow, who is the director of the Proclaim Movement, is going to come and spend the day with us. It will be after the 9 a.m. Mass next Saturday in the gym. If you're interested at all about this, we're going to be learning how to share our faith, how to evangelize, a lot of really simple, practical things. Uh, Eric's a great speaker, so if you're interested at all, you can speak with me either after Mass, I'll be outside, or you can send an email to me, contact me in any way, and please pray for this intention as well. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Salve Regina.